question about the validity of our laboratory. You know, we have a certified lab, uh, state certified lab, technician, uh, but you know, we want to verify our numbers too. So after we ran several of our numbers in the month of December and we start to hear that folks may not be uh, comfortable with us our own numbers, we sent those numbers out to a lab in Tallahassee, um, sorry, in Thomasville. And uh, we got very, very similar numbers. So we're confident in our folks. It gave us a, uh, it gave us a level of confidence in our ability to make sure that they're doing what they need to do as well. And of course, this chart, this overlay of, uh, of the blue is coming into Valdosta, and the green is coming to leaving Valdosta. The condition of the river each month during the calendar year. And you know, the city of Valdosta really, you know, our laboratory does laboratory work for not just the city of Valdosta, we do laboratory work for many entities. You know, we do the lab analysis for Lowndes County as well. So, uh, and uh, actually, for a water plant, anybody who's going to be in the family needs to send some of those. All right, uh, that kind of nice walk through. <coughs> Quick question for you. How much time elapsed from the time you realized the spill was centered with the Coochie to when you notified the counties downstream? How much time elapsed there? Uh, from the, the Florida got, counties. I got a message from Daryl at 4 30, about 5 30, that listing that we agreed on had I notified. So then you guys depend on the local counties downstream to disseminate that information out? From, from prior meetings, these quarterly meetings we had, sir, we agree. I think the first one that I, I will do the simplest listing of names and uh, I will make sure all those were notified. So <coughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Maybe do a suggestion and get with local emergency management mm -hmm. and other counties downstream and do the weather calls for those around the river, river areas. Like said, it's, that's what, that's what we're Yeah, it's so pretty detrimental when you're in the water and don't realize it's there. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a question. Did you notify Brooks County? Did I notify? Brooks County got notified when the press release was released. As far so as that's I know, a unless, unless someone from Brooks County is on that list that needs to be right. notified immediately. Yes. Hi, I'm Denise Shire. I'm the majority uh, landowner at the um, Jasper campground. May I make a suggestion that we re look at that list of who gets notified? Absolutely. And that goes back Absolutely. to the board for discussion? Absolutely. Yeah. Right. So that was, that was our result from our first poll meeting we had. Intended to center around notifications for the North Florida folks, so that's what we're dealing with at that time. But absolutely happy to add to that list, modify that list because it is a year old now. It's five years old. Sir, that some of that flow actually <coughs> went north into the river and, and affected folks in Georgia that were actually north of the site. I think that river flows south. It does flow south. It's a slow flow. 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 It's a slow they really need to we do met with our for genetic legislative delegation, yeah. Senator Bill Mockford, uh, Representative Chuck Brandon, and, and uh, Representative Jesse Show in our district for our state legislature in, in Madison at 1 o'clock today, along with EPA representatives from EPA, representatives from Florida Department of uh, Environmental Protection, Swan River Water Management District, Department of Health, Florida Department of Health. Um, unfortunately, Georgia EPD uh, decided not to attend, for whatever reason we don't know, a little bit disturbed about that. But um, for those present here, we've, we've been working closely with the city of Austin for the last year in our river task force. And we've had, I feel, significant cooperation between us as far as being now being informed in a timely manner and some things. And I know y'all done a lot of effort, we've done a lot of work in the infrastructure, 
mainly gearing towards these hydro events that we get where the, the, the plant overflows from stormwater infiltration and so forth. Um, it's unfortunate that we're here tonight to talk about, and, and just from our standpoint, um, I'll be frank, oversight, a lack of oversight, and um, quality control on the city of Dallas Park when it comes to your contractors that are out there doing your work. And I know you rely on them to do the work, but there has to be some form of oversight on was the work done properly, was it done adequately, was it done right, and is your system operating and functioning afterwards the way it should be. And just to give you an idea, we know that you know, my colleague here, Commissioner Adams, just briefly today made a mention in our meeting, 7.5 million gallons over a four or five day event equates to 40 to 50,000 gallons an hour that, that your plant missed, you know? And I've been told that it was three or four days after this work was done that your employees said, hey, we're missing a million, two gallons a day you do the math, calculation, and have to know estimates uh, at our plant. You know, and then you say, okay, then you go back and try to find out where this is happening. And, and I'll just be honest with you and just forgive me. For, it, I don't think that's good business. You got it? And just to be blunt about it. Um, we have issued in Madison County and uh, Hamilton County since December 9th, two local states of emergency that we, we've issued those local states of emergency for our citizens. And we're providing water samples for our citizens. We've had uh, 183 test wells tested in Madison County with 38 that's come back positive for coliform and a couple of them have heat cut up in tow line. Those are things that we're, we're trying to raise, uh, you know, raise awareness that it's important to have your wells tested regardless of where you live and, and to make sure your water quality is, is accurate and good. Um, and I understand the permit's been issued. That's great for the basin. There's a lot of that. And I, I'm glad that that's finally been accomplished. And I'm hoping that in the future, any major rain events where there's a stormwater infiltration that, that does occur, that that will be enough to keep the, your, your sewage out of the rivers. Okay? So, but that, that, that still goes back to the human factor and the quality of the work <coughs> that's being done, your oversight of the work that's being done, and basically, I mean, you're permitted by Georgia's EDP. It's your system. <coughs> and at the end of the day, regardless of who does the work, it comes back to see about Valdosta is your responsibility to make sure your system is operating accurately, and or act, operating the way it should be. And I know there's a lot of people here that are very frustrated about that. I guess part of the conversation I'd like to have tonight is what is the city of Valdosta doing from this point forward to make to have oversight of your system and oversight of your employees, oversight of who is doing the work for you. So with that, I'll address the quality control issue. Uh, here's what happened. Uh, it was a minor adjustment to the station. It was not a huge project that we needed construction manager out there watching. Uh, secondly, what happened was we did not realize they were making that adjustment. We did not know they were out there. How we found out they were about that, when we looked back in the logs from the company and they showed this going out. So at that point in time, we didn't know they were making that adjustment to after all of this happened. So there was no way we could go out there and check something they did because they made an adjustment on their own based on them in, you know, continuing to